Good afternoon, everybody. It's Thursday, the 24th of September 2020, and we're broadcasting live. Uh, this is a meeting of the Licensing Subcommittee of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea to consider an application for a variation of the premises license in respect of Harrods uh, in Brompton Road. Uh, my name is Greg Hammond. I'm councillor for Courtfield Ward, which is the ward immediately to the west of Harrods. I am familiar with the site. I've been into Harrods a handful of times over the year, but, uh, years, but I have no uh, interest to declare. Uh, I'd just like to ask the other panel members to introduce themselves um, and make any declarations, starting with Councillor Blakeman, please. Hello, I'm Judith Blakeman. I'm a councillor for Notting Dale Ward. I have been to Harrods on occasion, particularly to the food hall, but I have no interest to declare. Thank you. And Councillor Mills. Uh, good afternoon, Councillor Mills. Norland Ward, no declarations of uh, conflict or interest, but I have in the past sat on licensing hearings associated with Harrods. Thank you very much. And we three are the decision makers in this case, uh, but we're assisted by a number of uh, others, starting with our legal officer. Thank you, Chairman. I'm President Lindsay Lemazurier. Thanks very much. And then we have uh, our licensing officer. In fact, I think we have two licensing officers. Uh, thank you, Chair. Paul Veland, licensing officer present. Thanks very much. Laura McGann, licensing officer. Thanks very much. And we have a number of uh, committee officers supporting the meeting. I won't ask them to introduce themselves, but um, they're Anne Wright, Leonie Hill, Esme Shari and Yasmin Jama. Um, uh, we have no responsible authorities uh, present this afternoon. Um, so I'd like to turn to the applicant, uh, applicant's representative to introduce yourself and your team, please. So I'm expecting to see Mr. Rhys Gray. Oh. The Hello, Chair. Uh, my name's Chris Rhys Gay from Pinson Masons, and I'm representing Harrods today. Also with me, I've got Gabriella Williams, uh, Senior Counsel here at Harrods, and also uh, Ashley Saxton, the DPS and restaurant Head of Restaurants. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rhys Gray. And um, objectors, we have the Hanstown Residents Association with two, I understand, co-chairs. Um, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourselves in turn, please. Hello, uh, I'm um, Yegane Esla from uh, Hanstown Resident Association. Thanks, Ms. Esla. Hello, I'm El Bogwan Heskia and I'm representing Hanstown Residents Association as well. Thank you very much indeed. So uh, that's everybody's introduced. So the um, we're doing this online ob for obvious reasons. Uh, there's a few ground rules for uh, working licensing hearings online. Uh, the first is please only unmute your microphones when you're called to speak um, to prevent any background noise interfering with the case. Uh, secondly, please uh, turn your cameras off when you're not in a speaking role because it saves bandwidth. But um, when you are called to speak, yes, please, please do put them on so we can see you. Uh, thirdly, the chat function isn't in use, so um, uh, please don't use that. We won't be monitoring it. But if you do um, want to intervene at a particular uh, point, um, then you can use the electronic hand um, symbol. But uh, there's plenty of opportunities um, in the course of the case for people to have uh, uh, to, to have to say everything that needs to be said. Um, we need to do a, an election of a substitute chair because uh, the quorum for uh, is actually two councillors to make a decision. There's three of us today, but just in case I dropped out and couldn't be recovered, uh, the other two um, colleagues can continue the case. Um, so I will propose Councillor Mills as the substitute chair. And is that seconded? That's seconded by me. And it's accepted by me. And so that's agreed. So Councillor Mills is the substitute chair. Um, as a document check, we've had two case bundles. So the, the first one, the main case bundle, which I'll call Exhibit 1, that's 69 pages. And then we've got a we've had a subsequent um, bundle from Harrods consisting of 70 pages, and we'll call that Exhibit 2. Uh, the panel has read the entire contents of these, um, so you don't need to repeat um, word for word what's in them, but please do feel free to draw attention to any points that are 
helpful to your your cases. Um, in terms of the procedures today, I'll, I'll ask the licensing officer to give me a, give us a brief outline of the case. Uh, then I'll allow the applicant up to 10 minutes to present their case, which will be followed by questions from the panel, uh, the legal officer and objectors. Uh, I'll then ask the objectors to have up to 10 minutes to present their case and there'll be a question time after that. Um, we won't have a summing up, um, but there'll be some advice for, and final comments from the legal officer and then the panel will retire to make the decision and we will not be announcing that today. Um, so before we um, kick off, are there any other preliminary matters from either party? Nothing from me, Chair, thank you. Thank you. OK, so I'll take that as a no. So, um, Mr. Rhys Gray, you've got um, up to 10 minutes to present your case. Yeah, Chair, may I interject? Uh, I believe it's Mr. Phelan. I'm who's so who's sorry. Up. Yes, I, I, I do apologise. Mr. Phelan does. I said I was going to do that and he does need to, to do that. So, Mr. Phelan. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. Apologies. Today's application is made by Harrods Limited for the variation of a premises license at Harrods 87 to 135 Brompton Road, London, SW1X7XL. The application before you today seeks a number of changes to the premises license. The following is a summary of the proposed changes by floor. Lower ground floor, the addition of a wine bar in line with granted planning uh, permission, updating the plan to show the restaurant, addition of kitchen and retail free, addition of a staircase and beauty connected to ground floor, updating the layout of retail. To permit the sale of alcohol in newly constructed wine bar in the lower ground floor on Monday to Saturday from 10 a.m. until midnight and on Sunday from 11.30 a.m until 10.30 p.m. all night on New Year's Eve as a, as a non-standard timing. To permit the uh, late night refreshment in a newly constructed wine bar in a lower ground floor on Monday to Saturday from 11 p.m. until midnight. And again, this would be a non-standard timing of all night on, on New Year's Eve. The ground floor, updating the layout of the food halls. The first floor, removal of the bar. Second floor, removal of Harrods gift shop and ice cream parlor with kitchen added to cafe. Fourth floor, a minor extension and layout changes to restaurant one and restaurant two with the kitchen for restaurant two being moved. Uh, the following two points are for clarity and do not form part of the variation. Uh, to replace the wording attached to late night refreshment from on or off the premises to donate area, denotes areas for license or activities. Uh, this change would bring the wording in line with the plans attached to the premises license. I would also like to take this opportunity to clarify the times permitted for late night refreshment within the ground floor cafe. I can confirm that the applicant is correct regarding their assessment of the 2018 variation and the current license attached as Appendix A should in fact read as follows. Please could you turn to page seven of the report. The words and the ground floor cafe should have been removed from late night refreshment and the time specified for Monday to Saturday should have been duplicated to late night refreshment ground floor cafe only found on page nine. This effectively confirms that the provision of late night refreshment is currently available in the ground floor cafe Monday to Sunday 23 to 2330. No additional steps have been proposed at this stage to further promote the license and objectives. Four representations have been received which oppose this application. This includes two from local residents association, the first being Knightsbridge Association and the second being a Hanstown Residents Association. A summary of their representations can be found on page four with copies attached to at Appendix D on pages 36 to 39. This application did not detract a representation from any responsible authority. Council records indicate that the premises were the subject of one noise complaint over the preceding 12 month period. A summary of this complaint is attached at Appendix E, page 40. I can also confirm that the premises submitted six temporary event notices over the same period. A summary of these notif uh, notifications can be found on Appendix F, page 41. And that concludes the summary of this application. I'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Phelan. That was very helpful. And I apologise again for my discourtesy and nearly uh, cutting you out there. So um, uh, we do now move on to the application. So uh, I will invite the Councillor Mills. I, I'm sorry, just, just for the sake of clarity, Chairman. May I ask why we uh, why we are dealing with things on the lower ground floor, like the addition of a staircase? Why does that come under our licensing powers? Um, forgive, forgive me not understanding why. I understand why there would be the general need to update plans. And the same for the ice cream parlour, uh, I think situated on, is it the 
the fourth floor, so the gift shop and the ice cream parlor, were there licensable activities there? And are we mixing up planning and licensing? And the other thing that I'd like to know now that Mr. Phelan has gone through the application is are we effectively looking at a transferal of a late night refreshment license from what used to be the ground floor cafe to the lower ground floor cafe where it now is, and therefore an extension by half an hour on this application. I'm, I'm a bit confused and I do apologise for that. Mr. Phelan. Uh, no, no problem, Chair. Um, ultimately, uh, the application, I do believe, is for a 30-minute extension on the um, ground floor cafe. But it, uh, the, my, I, what I tried to do was clarify the fact that they do currently have a licence there from 11pm um, until 11.30pm. Uh, that was an error on our part follow, following the variation in 2018. Um, uh, my understanding is, is that there is, uh, there is a 30-minute increase sought uh, for that area, but it is. Um, I just wanted to clarify that point. In terms of the other areas, I mean, ultimately, you are right. They're, they're not uh, essentially licensable, but we do want the plans to, to reflect, obviously, the premises. And uh, from, from past experience, uh, my understanding is, is that the more information we can have uh, in terms of, of variation applications, the more we can obviously relate to residents and businesses. So, so essentially, we have been inquired about a few times as to what the full extent of a variation is. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that clarifies uh, the situation. Thanks very much. So, so if, I may, if I may can ask one yep. more question on that. None of us have been able to do a site uh, visit. Uh, are we just to assume that licensing officers in conjunction with planning officers have done this and therefore we can take the plans as read? Because I certainly would not be able to update the plans um, as, as as verifiable or accurate simply because we haven't been uh, on the premises, uh, understandably, why during COVID. And secondly, because I don't know that planning, uh, it may be that licensing officers have satisfied themselves that what's on the bundle, or the papers that are on the bundle, the plans that are on the bundle are correct. Oh, absolutely. So, so essentially, what it is, as you say, it's been difficult to visit the premises uh, as of late due to due to COVID nineteen. Um, I, I can't speak for for planning officers, but what I can say is that they've not made an objection uh, to this application. So, uh, as I say, I can't speak for them, but I can refer to to the lack of an objection from planning. Um, uh, ultimately, with respect to the layout of the current. Uh, plans on the premises. I um, there there is an audit. Condition eleven of the premises license requires the premises to carry out an audit. Now the one of uh, September twenty nineteen raised no issues, and and the one that is currently due, we we would uh, sort of expect to see um, at some stage this month. Now we understand that uh, the current climate makes uh, everything slightly more difficult, but as I say, we, we we would sort of expect to see that at some stage this month. And then that would clarify the precise layout. But as I say, the, the most recent audit does not show any issues with regards to the current plans. But that was prior to this, to, to the to the new uh, to to the new uh, modifications, building modifications. Prior to the cafe being built and the, this being moved and all that, or was that? Well, before? I, I'm not sure in terms of when the planning permission was granted. Um, but but ultimately, yeah, the the audit that, that we received is in relation to to the plans at the time of September uh, 2019. So, if the planning application um, was after that, then then ultimately that's that that's different to obviously uh, the information that we have. Okay, thank Could you. I, thank you. I'd like to ask Councillor Blakeman's got a question, and then I am quite keen to move on to the application because I think we need to tease a lot of these points out in the knowledge of what the applicants have uh, submitted to us. Um, but uh, and I know Mr. Rhys Gray's got a point to add as well. So, Councillor Blakeman first. Yes, I wanted to ask Mr. Phelan just to clarify that with regard to the first floor removal of the bar, presumably we're being asked to remove the licensing um, that covers that as well. Uh, that, that, that's my, my understanding of the application. A removal of the bar would be the bar area of the plan uh, on the first floor. I believe it's on the, um, apologies, let me find the page now. Um, so yeah, on the first floor there is a, a licensed area there marked as bar. Uh, yeah, just towards the we would need to remove the license as well as the bar. Well, we would be removing the bar, absolutely yes. Yeah, and the license. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, Mr. Rees Gray, you had a point uh, on this before we have your application. I suppose if I could just chat, uh, clarify, Chair, that would be lovely. Thank um, you. There is no uh, transfer in terms of late night refreshment. Um, the element that, that Mr. Phelan spoke about was just tidying up elements in the 2018 license in relation to what had been granted there. So there is no transfer or additional hours sought for late night refreshment uh, on the ground floor cafe 
in relation to questions being asked on plans and stairways uh, and the areas that are being removed and added obviously um, as has been alluded to there is condition 11 on the premises license and as part of good housekeeping that's been done the reason that stairs uh, and the like are on there is for the fire fire officer so that he can um, look and ensure that when the application goes in that all safety aspects in terms of fire can be looked at and that's why the stair element has been placed on there uh, and in terms of areas on the license being removed yes you're quite right in terms of that first floor bar being removed it will no longer be a licensable area uh, inside the premises hopefully that clarifies okay i think that's that's very helpful just, thank so just as we're here then could you clarify about the gift shop and the ice cream parlor and the kitchen with cafe on the top floors because then that that would simplify what we need to look at I'll allow that as the last question at this stage, then I think we really do need to hear the full submission and then we can from the applicants and then we can go into some detail on these questions. So, Mr. Uh, Ray Gray. Uh, yes, so as, as set out, the variation um, specifically sets out as the plans have been updated, those areas that we would request to be licensed and those areas that are no longer needed to be licensed. So, yes, in terms of, of those floors where it says uh, elements have been removed, they will no longer be licensed areas within the premises. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thanks very much indeed. So, uh, Mr. Rhys Gray, over to you um, for 10 minutes uh, for your uh, um, application. Thank you, Chair. Um, in my representation, uh, I will cover four following areas, a brief, a brief background for Harrods, uh, the application itself, uh, the representations received, and then a very quick summary. So by way of background, uh, Harrods is an iconic, world-renowned department store offering a mix of luxury, high-end retail goods and services. For the committee's reassurance, there are written training policies and formal training programs in place for all those that sell alcohol, which ensure that staff are equipped to meet and promote all licensing objectives. Training is carried out by staff uh, when they're inducted uh, and further um, every six months refresher training takes place. Uh, and as always, when there are major changes in the legislation, uh, it can be confirmed that formal training logs are kept uh, and this recorded, this training recorded within them. In terms of the wider community, uh, Harrods are a very active member of the local community, uh, assisting and donating to local charities. Their long term partnership uh, with St Cuspert's continues, uh, this being a local community hub that aims to tackle homelessness, isolation and food waste in the local community. Uh, not only uh, donations made, but also uh, employees volunteer their time with St Cuthbert's. So when the store was closed uh, during the COVID outbreak, uh, food packages were given to local food banks, to the hospitals uh, and to vulnerable people within the community. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that since reopening, daily donations have continued to the food banks at Albright Community Fridge uh, and indeed the Waterloo Food Bank. Turning then to the application itself, um, we've we've already discussed the non-contentious clarification points in relation to uh, the ground floor cafe and late night refreshment. Uh, there's also the updating of the plans again. Uh, we've just discussed that and the reason that that has been uh, submitted uh, is due to condition 11 on the premises licensing, uh, premises license and uh, because the general housekeeping uh, matters. So you'll appreciate that Harrods is a department store uh, is constantly evolving uh, and changing its staff to maintain its world-class status uh, and in order to achieve this uh, it therefore needs to continually change uh, its offering and indeed therefore its layout. So we then turn to the third element which is the contentious element of the application which is the extension of hours uh, until midnight for the wine bar on the lower ground floor and that can be found in exhibit one at page 31 um, and it just shows uh, the wine bar's location. Uh, in Exhibit 1, um, it confirms the hours that are being applied for, uh, and this is Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. until midnight, uh, and on Sunday, 11.30 to 22.30, uh, and indeed late night refreshment to reflect the same for this wine bar. Uh, the reason that these hours are being sought uh, is so that the premises license can be aligned with a recently granted planning permission for these hours for the wine bar. It should be noted that Harrods do take their relationship with the community very seriously uh, and as per the condition on the premises license, Ashley Saxon, the DPS, uh, his details are given to the local residents association and the local ward councillors uh, so that he can be contacted if needs be. Uh, and we would urge any local residents, should they have an issue, to please 
do contact uh, Ashley in person. As you're aware, the responsible authorities uh, uh, are able to submit representations, um, but none have put in representations uh, to this application. Something we would say uh, that is a sign of the confidence that they have in Harrods ability to promote the licensing objectives uh, and in particular the uh, environmental health uh, and police. You will be aware that a planning permission has been granted to cover the hours of the wine bar. Uh, and as per paragraph 14.64 of the section 182 guidance and paragraph 4.4 of your own statement of licensing policy, we are aware that the licensing committee are not bound by the decision made by the planning committee. However, it does state that the committee and officers should consider discussions with their planning counterparts with the aim of agreeing mutually acceptable planning hours. So the planning hours uh, that have been granted uh, and determined uh, by a planning appeal uh, and as part of the appeal notice, um, evidence uh, had been presented and submitted to deal with these issues. So if I could then turn you to exhibit uh, two, page 45, so that was the additional uh, information from Harrods, uh, and there is the appeal decision. And I'll just pick out the key elements from that, please. Uh, so paragraph four, it states the internal entertainment noise from the wine bar uh, would be well contained and that no significant noise is predicted from customers arriving or, or departing or from smokers within the designated and managed terrace area. Paragraph five. Sorry, uh, Mr. Rees-Gray, I've got possibly different page numbers here. Uh, in exhibit two, I've got some pages, um, typed pages, a pagination. 45 is the WSP report with noise predictions and it's the whole of section five. Uh, so maybe I've got maybe, to the wrong. We, so it's the additional papers that Harrod submitted. Yeah, I've got those. So it was page 25 of those. They were numbered in the bottom right hand corner. Page 25, hopefully. Oh, I was on 45, sorry. Sorry, so uh, try that. No, 25. That's no, that's not them. Uh, I've got the appeal decision on page 25 and 26. Yeah, that, that's yes, the there one, we are. Please. Yeah. Thank you. So paragraph five states that although I note comments received from neighbours to Harrods, there is no substantive evidence to the contrary to suggest that noise is going to be a significant issue as a result of the wine bar to the detriment of neighbour living conditions. And then paragraph six in relation to traffic, uh, this has been assessed through a transport assessment, which found it was highly accessible, a highly accessible site with good public transport links. The increase in visitor numbers as a result of the wine bar is said to be negligible. The report also concludes that the wine bar would not result in noticeable change in local traffic or an impact on parking availability. So I have just for belt and braces um, submitted the noise assessment that reflects this and that can be found at pages 29 to 48 but I won't drag you through that. The above therefore is clear evidence that the wine bar and the additional hours uh, will not have an adverse effect on residents. Turning to the council's own statement of licensing policy at paragraph 8.1 it states that it is appropriate to generally limit operating hours until midnight in order to maintain the balance between residents and commercial interests. This application therefore is in line with that midnight general limit. Turning then to the representations, um, these can be found at Appendix D of Exhibit 1 uh, and there are four. Um, you'll see that in the additional material, so Exhibit 2, pages 13 to 22, uh, are the letters that uh, we wrote to those that uh, put in a representation uh, to seek to reassure them um, that there would be uh, no issues with this application. Dealing individually then um, with these representations, the Knightsbridge Association, Mr Meitner's concern was in relation to noise emanating from people leaving. Uh, although I set out in our response, we didn't believe that this would be an issue. Uh, he asked that signs be placed up uh, and indeed Harrods are happy to have a condition uh, placed on the license uh, in order to reflect this and this can be found at page 23 uh, again of exhibit 2 and it states for clarity for the lower ground floor wine bar only signage will be displayed at exit door 5a requesting that patrons leave quietly and make their way to Brompton Road. I then turn to the Hanstown Resident Association. This representation uh, relates to concerns uh, due to noise uh, and disruption uh, being caused by patrons. Um, as already alluded to, uh, we have offered a condition to deal with that. 
The representation mentions inebriated noisy patrons. Uh, this wine bar is very high end uh, and an experienced bar uh, and certainly not a vertical drinking establishment. Uh, indeed, it's not expected that the bar will attract uh, any rowdy drinking crowd. Uh, and for ease, I've put in images of the bar and indeed the, the pricey uh, menu list, as it were. And they can be found at pages 1 to 12, uh, again, of the additional material that Harrod submitted. In terms of traffic and taxis, again, this was covered previously when I touched on the appeal notice. In terms of safety in the neighbourhood due to late night patrons uh, being in the area, attracting beggars, pickpockets, car th extra car theft and burglary, um, there is absolutely no evidence to support this. Uh, and indeed, there is no supporting representation from the police either. In relation to the smoking area that has been mentioned, the management plan um, that can be found at pages 49 to 52 uh, of the material that Harrods have submitted Exhibit 2. Um, it clearly states that there will be five uh, members of public allowed in that smoking area and they will be escorted up to that location, not um, 18 as is thought to be the case. But on page 51, the smoking is dealt with specifically at that point. In terms of a representation, um, <coughs> excuse me, mentioning that an irrevocable uh, precedent would be set. Um, Chair, you'll be aware that every application must be dealt with on its merits, and that's confirmed at paragraph 2.7 of your own statement of licensing policy. There were then two further uh, representations at Appendix D, um, that from Lady Sorrell and one from Miss Kelly, and again, the points made in those have been dealt with, um, as I've covered through the presentation here. Um, it was noted, uh, and as can be found at page 41 of the report to so Exhibit 1, that temporary event notices have been used um, for the last it's uh, seven weekends now, obviously because time's updated since the report was released. Uh, and indeed, that was for a Friday and Saturday night operating uh, until midnight, uh, and there have been no issues or concerns with that. And therefore, we would say evidence that the premises can operate uh, to those hours. Um, you'll note uh, that I have included in the additional papers a copy of the High Court case of Thwaites. Um, I obviously do not expect you to read it, but the key element of that is um, whether to grant must be assessed on the actual evidence that you have before you. And as I've highlighted, there's no negative evidence has been before you, before you, and indeed only evidence confirming no adverse effects on the residents will occur. In a in brief summary, Chair, um, as highlighted. Harrods are a premium operator and there's no evidence before you uh, to link matters alleged in the representation. Uh, there are no representations from the responsible authorities, especially EHO uh, and the police. There is a granted planning permission for the hours that we seek. Um, the hours that we seek are in line with the general midnight limit uh, for the council. Uh, and indeed, uh, in terms of the Thwaites case, uh, you must uh, grant on the evidence before you. Uh, we would therefore ask that the application be granted as applied for with the extra uh, condition offered uh, in relation to noise. Um, Chair, these are my submissions. Um, Gabriella uh, and Ashley uh, on hand for questions also. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Reese Gray. Let's um, start with Councillor Blakeman uh, for questions. Uh, well, uh, my initial puzzlement about what a staircase in beauty was, um, uh, well, I then worked out it meant through the beauty department. Um, you don't seem to have a closing time for the wine bar. You've got the sale of alcohol up until 24 hours to align with our policy. Um, is the half an hour's drinking time or can somebody go in there and buy two bottles of wine just before 2400 and then spend all night in the bar drinking. We do need to see a closing time. Chair, the license is a, uh, a very old license and no uh, opening and closing times are on the license for the store. Um, but Ashley has confirmed that it will be shut at midnight. There would be no possibility of someone being able to order two bottles of champagne and stay on the premises at that time. So uh, we normally have half an hour's drinking time, a uh, drinking up time. So actually somebody can buy their drink just before midnight and then knock it back ever so quickly in order to be out by 12 o'clock. It seems a bit odd. 
Um, can I ask also about your smoking? You said that you would be taking only five people up to the smoking terrace, but I thought the smoking terrace also serves other parts of the premises. Is that correct? Uh, sorry, Chair. Um, the, the smoking element contained in the management plan at our page 51 um, is specific to this bar. So no, it is specific to this bar. It's not for other areas within the premises. Right, um, so the, sorry, the limit is... Sorry. Um, <coughs> sorry can we... Who's... That's no, that's I, I think we... I don't know who that is interrupting, but uh, could we but, wait till... Yeah, that's a mistake. That's a, the, the, smoke, the smoking area is for the restaurant. Hang on. Well. Let order. No, 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 hang on. on. No, I'm asking the question. Yes. The question I asked was that the terrace appeared to be for other parts of, of the premises as well as the wine bar. That was my question. Mr. Reese Gay says that the smoking terrace is only for the wine bar, if I understood his answer correctly. I think we've had Miss uh, Esler yeah. intervening, and uh, it's not it's your not, turn to ask questions yet. Sorry, so uh, you will get an opportunity. Question. It's for the Tiffany restaurant as well at the moment on the lower ground floor. Sorry, I've got the. Oh, that was a question that I asked. Was yeah. it for other parts of the premises? As well? And the answer was no, it wasn't. Well, in the last planning meetings that we had, that is the designated area for both of those restaurants, for another restaurant as well. Mr. Riske? Um, sorry, Chair. No, I've been told that that management plan is specific for this bar. That doesn't answer the question. Um, I haven't got, sorry, I haven't got the full uh, context and I wasn't at that planning um, appeal myself, so I'm unaware. All I know that this was the management plan specific for this premises license, um, for, sorry, for this wine bar. So there are 75 uh, maximum capacity for the wine bar, and this was the five allocated to that area uh, and has been signed off by planning. And there's so 12. If, so, so hang, hang on. If anybody from the Tiffany part of the thing were smoking on that terrace, that would be a breach of the condition and therefore that would be a criminal offence. Am I correct? Uh, in terms of planning, if that was the case, then yes, it would be. <clears throat> because obviously, Harrods have to adhere to whatever planning uh, is in place for uh, the other. Uh, sorry, where did you say the other cafe the Tiffany, was? The Tiffany. Tiffany's. Yes, yeah, so that would be the case. Mm, OK. Um, and um, can you tell me, um, you don't have a dispersal policy as such. You, you're merely going to put that additional condition on the, the notice. Is that correct? Uh, so again, there's the in the management plan, uh, departure is covered and therefore to avoid duplication uh, it's covered in there and no nothing specific has been placed within this application the reason that the extra condition was given was because that was what was requested by the residents association and indeed it wasn't covered in the management plan right so, thank you so if i turn you council side to page 51 again it departures covered and staff departures covered in that management plan yeah, so that, that, that's just the statement. So that is the, the full sum of your dispersal policy. Yeah. yeah, OK, thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, Councillor Blakesman. Councillor Mills. Uh, thank you. In terms of just to follow on from Councillor Blakeman's question and your offer of a 2400 closing hour time, are you prepared to give that? Is, is her better off that as a condition? And in addition to the licensing that your closing hours with this will be 2400. Mr. Is gay. Uh, sorry, I was just um, trying to seek instructions. Obviously, the premises license doesn't have hours on it, uh, and so therefore we don't be by way of condition. Um, if you could bear with me two seconds while sure. I just take instructions. Sure.
Hello, Councillor Mills. Um, yes, uh, we would be uh, willing uh, in terms of the wine bar to have yes closure at that time. Okay, so, so uh, may I ask a couple of follow-up questions to that? So, in the, it's uh, f forgive me for um, uh, asking you this, Mr. Gave it. We haven't had the benefit of a site visit for obvious reasons, but I'm slightly confused by the wine bar on the lower ground floor and the restaurant. They seem to be being conflated. So, uh, fortunately, we've just heard there's 75 covers in the wine bar. How many covers are there in the restaurant? And what's the closing hour for the restaurant? Or are they one and the same? Uh, they're certainly not one and the same. No, the wine bar is certainly a separate entity. Right. Uh, please bear with me while I... Uh, because as, you the, as, you're, as you're seeking instructions, may I just ask, perhaps you, you might want to ask... Uh, Council for Harrods this question, which is, if you close the wine bar at 2400 by way of condition, should you not also be closing the restaurant at 20, or what, is it 2330 for the restaurant? Let me just see. Yes, 2330 for the restaurant. It's midnight 30 on some days, I think. Anyway, it's just to help the licensing authority with enforcement because obviously if you've got the wine bar closing at 2400 by way of condition how would you know that it's people from the wine bar stroke the Georgian restaurant who who are not breaching the condition so that's uh, point number one and point number two can you let can you let us know how many covers there are in the restaurant itself uh, thank you chair let me just um, seek instructions on that thank you Hello, Councillor Mills. Um, so in terms of your questions, there are 130 covers in the um, the restaurant area that is adjacent to the wine bar, if I understood you correctly, if that was the yes, area. Yes, so that that's 130 plus 75 then. Yeah, so in that, in that area, 130 covers uh, and then the wine bar with its 75. Yes. That's 200, 205 covers. And perhaps you might explain, because the two will obviously, if you now say they're adjacent, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, I don't that that's going to um, how does that go how do you see that impacting on your enforcement of a condition you've just offered and how what about this does the dispersal for that go right out onto Brompton Road or does it presently go to hands onto hands place sorry just for clarification that uh, they're two separate entities one is a brasserie restaurant the restaurant and the second is an individual wine bar uh, for clarification Yes, absolutely right. And they're adjacent to each other, I think you just said. And that means that there's going to be a mix up of people going up to smoke, people going out, people using the loos. I presume that there are uh, communal loos. So uh, in terms of enforcement for our officers, 
there's no good there's 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 nothing in your management plan mentions how you're going to separate those two entities but you're now offering a condition of closure of 2400 for the wine bar so my question to you is how is Harrods proposing to handle the dispersal from both those uh, places because they're not going to know who's coming out of which? Uh, sorry, Councillor Mills, in case it's not clear, they are two very distinct, although they're adjacent to each other, they're two very distinct elements. Uh, one is a wine bar and one is the brasserie. So the brasserie is operated for um, a substantial period um, without incident uh, and there have been no issues and then this application is specific to the wine bar and the management plan is specific to the wine bar. Yeah, Mr. Riske, I take that point but perhaps we just move on. I don't think we're going to uh, I don't th think we're going to um, make ground on this. Uh, in terms of the hours, you, you kindly mentioned the planning appeal, but I didn't hear what the hours were for uh, in the planning. Was it up to 2400? Yes, it was. The planning appeal was 1000 to midnight uh, Monday to Sunday. Grateful. And then you also talked about the tens and yeah. the tens, uh, we, we, we did have a, a wonder why you were having tens. Can you just tell us where those tens were? Were they in the uh, in the um, new bar area? If I yes, they were specific to the wine bar and the wine bar only. Okay, thank you for that. And I mean, I would like you at some point in time to talk about dispersal because that is really at the heart of the objections for the Hans, uh, Hanstown Residents Association. So uh, that would be, that, that. I, I think we do need to know that and I think we do need to work out the fact that the people from the cafe and the people from the restaurant, I, I don't understand how, how both are exiting the premises, one at 23.30 and the other at 2400 or, or, or 2430. But um, so can, can we have some clarity on that when you get a chance to talk back to Harrods? In terms of the ground floor, can I just for my own uh, for my own satisfaction work out that you still got an eatery on the ground floor that is licensed? Uh, the plans reflect uh, as as they show you. So, so there is you... the ground floor cafe. That's still that's still that's still there. That's still operating. That's the yes. one until eleven thirty. Yes. And then you've also, this is a completely different point on your application. You talk, you talk about updating the layout of the food halls. Is there anything there within licensable activity uh, lic or licensing that we should concern ourselves uh, with? Or is that just a sort of an architectural layout? It's just architectural layout. So that's where alcohol's sold uh, in the food hall. Uh, and it's just that that whole area is licensed so that um, people can take it to the tills to be to pay there. And, uh, and again, because we haven't been able to visit with officers, uh, there is not proposed to be an increase in that area or uh, a, a problem when later things do clear up and there will be an audit on the premises. We can take it that you are not altering the actual square footage of what is licensable in the food hall. No, that's correct. It's just layout. OK, changes. so at, at some point in time, it would be helpful to understand the dispersal policy, which you don't have, but which you might have incorporated into your management plan. So, so that is correct. The management plan is bespoke to the wine bar as the wine bar is a separate entity to the brasserie. So I understand that you're, you believe that they're linked, but they're not. Uh, the brasserie uh, has operated for a period uh, and there have been no issues with the dispersal there. Specific to that is the wine bar with the later hours and the bespoke um, dispersal plan for that covered in the management plan. OK, so in the management plan, it would be that you would try as best as possible through signage. Uh, I don't think it men mentions marshals, but through staff and signage to direct people onto the Brompton Road. Uh, bear with me two seconds, Councillor Mills. So in terms of security, uh, a member of Harrods security team will be available at door five throughout the duration of the night. Uh, we'll actively discourage the wine bar patrons from loitering in the area. Uh, in addition, there'll be security staff at door four uh, until 12.30 a.m. monitoring chauffeured cars and directing them to the NCP car park. Uh, this will ensure that chauffeured cars do not congregate at this junction. Uh, and then in terms of departure, guest departure will be by the same route as arrival. However, if there are more guests wishing to depart at the same time, Harrods can accommodate them and the bar lounge will be used as a waiting area to stagger these guests. 
guests travelling by foot will be directed to the Brompton Road and encouraged to do so quietly uh, by remain, reminder notices at the exit by staff. Uh, guests looking for a taxi will be directed to the taxi rank uh, on Brompton Road. Uh, noise le levels will be monitored and controlled by security to ensure there is minimal disturbance to neighbours. All customers will have left the building by 0030 Monday to Sunday. And you're offering that management plan as a condition, are you? Uh, no, so we didn't want to duplicate um, what's already in place in terms of planning because it would just purely be a duplication. So obviously Harrods have to adhere to, uh, and we've discussed earlier that they have to adhere to the, uh, the planning element, uh, which has been signed off um, by the planning team. Um, should you wish to cut and paste those in on the license, I, I can see constructions uh, from my client to see if they'd be willing to do that. Uh, but for me, it would it would seem unnecessary if it's already there in terms of the planning. Uh, it, it's not unusual for us to mention within a condition either a dispersal plan or a management plan where something is sought up to, well, you'd be certainly beyond the midnight hour, but certainly with later application. So it might be helpful if other uh, decision makers find that appropriate for you to take instructions when and if you can. Thank you. Those okay. are all my questions. Thank you, Councillor Mills. I see Councillor Blakeman has uh, put her electronic hand up, so I'll uh, hand to her for her supplementary now before mine. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was wondering where the terrace, the smoking terrace, was marked on the plans. The only terrace I can see is on page 35 of the main pack, which is on the fourth floor, page 35, and it says terrace bar. They're contained on the current uh, plans attached to the current license, so I, I believe the only plan shown that you have with the plant, the variation plans. Sorry, I don't. I I still don't understand where the smoking terrace for five persons is located. Uh, it, it's on the sixth floor. On the sixth floor. I don't think we've got a plan for a sixth floor, have we? So I can tell you where it is from from the map in front of you, if you would like. Not to. at the moment. No, I don't actually. Um, your um, uh, no, Mrs. Esler, your your opportunity <coughs> to intervene comes a little bit later, if you don't mind. So uh, um, you'll have a full opportunity to present your your case and to ask questions uh, in a moment. So uh, please bear with us while we go through this. It's really important that we hear from the answers to the councillors' questions at this stage. Thank you. Yes, I, I, we don't seem to have plans for the sixth floor, so we don't know where the smoking terrace actually is. So I think Mr. Riske is ready to speak, um, but if not, Mr. Phelan has his electronic hand up. Okay. Um, sorry, Chair, is the smoking area is on the sixth floor, but we haven't got a, a plan for that. We believe it's on the premises license currently. I haven't got the current premises license available. Uh, Mr. Phelan wishes to um, intervene at this point. Just, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm just having a look at the current premise license now, and it, it ranges from the lower ground floor to the fifth floor. Um, there, there is not a, a sixth floor on the current premises license. Um, I'm, um, uh, I'm just double checking it as we speak, but at the moment, all information is indicating to the fact that the, the premises license goes up to the fifth floor. And of course, smoking is not a licensable activity, and therefore, if there's no licensable activities on the fifth, sixth floor, I'm assuming that um, there's no need for it to appear on your plans. Would that well, be correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. Sorry, apologies. Absolutely correct, yeah. A licensable activity. If there are none on the sixth floor, then we wouldn't uh, be required to see that. 
So we don't know where the people are going to go and smoke because we haven't seen a plan. Um, Yeah, okay, well, moving on, I'm I'm still now confused about um, the closing time of the brasserie. Are you saying that the brasserie is closing at 11.30 as well as selling alcohol up until 11.30? Uh, Council Mills, it is um, within store hours, so yes, 23.30. Right, and finally, your your tens, you said that they were just in the brasserie, but the paper... No, sorry, not, not, just in the, not just in the brasserie, just the wine bar. The just tent, the wine just bar, that wine actually bar, the yes. paper says it's the whole building. Uh, no, specifically the tens, I can forward them on or hopefully... Um, Mr. Phelan can confirm they were spe- it was specific. It was limited to the, the number of 85. No, that, that just lists the hours. It doesn't list the specific description. Um, please bear with me and I can draw one up for you. Uh, no, I was just confused, that's all. I'm trying to sort out my confusions. No, no, that's fine. I fully understand. So when the 10 were submitted and I submitted them personally, the area that was applied for, and I'll read it verbatim from the 10, uh, lower ground floor wine bar, door 5A, near entrance 5 to the store. To operate the wine bar area as a bar on the lower ground floor. So that was the only area um, that was licensed by the temporary event notice. Okay. Would you, would you, I can email one of those in if that's easier or, <coughs> or hopefully one of the, that's all right. the licensing was, team will be able to clarify. I was confused by your initial answer. Sorry, I apologise. The tens were specifically for uh, the wine bar only, not the brasserie. Thank you. Yeah, I thank think you. That, that sounds like Councillor Bateman's last question on this point. But Councillor Mills had a uh, had a hand up now for a supplementary. Uh, yes, please, if I may. I, I uh, this smoking issue, albeit. It's not a licensable activity. I mean, I, I, I did. I was on um, a previous application where we were shown the smoking area at the very top of Harrods, out onto the terrace. What I'm troubled by, and perhaps um, Harrods can help to alleviate that worry, is what if, if you take if you are smoking and you come out of the wine bar and you go, I presume, into a lift with a security officer up to the terrace and you can you carry your drink and can we make it uh, would it be helpful not uh, because you wouldn't be licensed at that hour through the whole store would it be helpful to have a condition that said that there should be no uh, containers from the wine bar to the smoking area uh please bear with me two seconds Um, yes, we would be happy to have a condition, um, although you'll understand that consumption of alcohol is not a licensable activity, so they would be well uh, within their rights to do so. We'd be more than happy to condition the license to say that they couldn't, if going to the smoking area, uh, take uh, a drink with them. Uh, is that what you have in relation to the brasserie license? It's just a matter of the licenses. So presumably that will have been spotted for the brasserie. Uh, no, there is no condition on the premises license to state that. So well, why don't we, as a sort of good management, put this condition first all, or at least ask the committee to consider whether that would be good, because I think that's both uh, safety and helpful. I believe that's a matter for the committee rather than ourselves. Yeah. No, but you're prepared to offer it for us to consider.
Sorry, have I lost sound? No, you haven't, Councillor Blakeman. Uh, I think Mr. Rieske is just taking instructions. Okay, thank you. Um, apologies, I was just seeking instructions. Um, we're just concerned that you may be conflating the two issues. Obviously, we're here specifically looking at the wine bar with the management plan that's in place. Um, if it does assist in relation to the brasserie, um, if, you, if you feel that there's a, a need to, then you can add a condition in relation to the brasserie um, that no one should leave that also. But we, we're just concerned that things are being conflated into two separate issues. Um, obviously, we're currently looking at the wine bar. No, so, sorry, that may be my mistake, my bad explanation. I had only uh, looked at it in relation to the wine bar, but had rather foolishly assumed that uh, that it would had would would apply to the brasserie. But I, I understand, of course, brasserie has been in existence for quite some time, probably not been reviewed, and there's not been a variation held, which may be why it isn't on the license. So my apologies for that. I'm perfectly. Uh, prepared, uh, as this is about the wine bar, to seek that condition only in relation to the wine bar. Thank you very much. Was that it, Councillor Mills, on this, from that supplementary? Thank, thank you, Chairman. Yes, it was. Thank you. So I have only a handful of questions uh, left. Um, on the smokers, we'll start there. Um, Mr. Riesko, you said five at a time, um, but somewhere in my mind I've got 18. I'm just wondering why I might have thought that. Um, can you help me with that? In please? the representation, the number 18 uh, is mentioned, and that's where you're getting 18 from. And obviously, we've been specific and put in the management plan for the bar, which is five. And that, that's five just from the wine bar and not from any of the other uh, various restaurants mm. and uh, Yes, outlets. that's correct. Uh, um, and do the other outlets have different smoking areas elsewhere in the building? Or is it just five from the, uh, I think, uh, he's either gone to take instructions or uh, I've lost him. And I'll take an intervention from Hanstown presently. Shall I open my mic or no? No, I, I'm, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you presently. Um, we, we need to get through the councillors' questions first. Then, then I'm going to offer the legal officer questions, and then it's your turn to ask questions. And um, then, once your questions are done, we'll be presenting your your case, Mr. Reesko. Sorry, Councillor Hamilton, I seem to have dropped out there. You um, did, yes. In terms of um, planning, I'm uncertain what happens in the remainder of the building. Um, I, c I can only speak in terms of the management plan for the five that are related to the wine bar. Uh, and your colleagues from Harrods who are present with you, c can they answer that question perhaps? Uh, bear with me, please. Uh, I'm just going to seek instructions. Chair, unfortunately, um, neither Gabriella or um, Ashley um, have the information to hand, but what has been confirmed is that the area that's been created for the wine bar is a bespoke area for five. Okay. Any other. Thank you. That That's helpful. Um, so my second question then is the entrance to the wine bar. I think you talked about door 5A. Is that a bespoke entrance for the wine bar or is that used for other parts of the building? Um, it, it has, uh, it, it is an entrance to the building, but is branded the Baccarat bar, the wine bar, if that makes sense. So you could, if you chose to, enter Harris door through that bar, uh, through that door, but it's very much branded Baccarat bar. I see. And that's, that's the doorway you'd propose to have the signage and you've got um, 
uh, yes, a member that's of the Harris Security. Yeah, and a member of Harris Security is is stationed there. Um, if I am, am I correct in remembering that? Yes, that's what the management plan states. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I think my final question: we had we had a lot of discussion about the layout diagrams and the licensed areas, um, and I just want to confirm with Mr. Phelan that. Um, I know Mr. Riesgay, you were presenting them as uncontroversial and we were looking at the hours for the wine bars being the, the core of the case. But uh, Mr. Phelan, is there anything else you want to tell us about the uh, anything we should be uncomfortable about with the uh, various circled areas on the diagrams? Uh, no, Chair, nothing nothing comes to mind at this stage. Um, if anything does arise, I, I will um, uh, inform you as soon as that's the case. All right, thank you. Um, in which case, I'll turn to uh, Ms. Uh, Le Mazurier, um to ask if you've got any questions at this stage. No, I haven't got any questions. I just wanted to confirm so far that the um, Mr. Rhys Gay has confirmed that he's happy to have a closing time condition of 2,400 hours for the wine bar, um, the extra condition offered by themselves, and a further condition saying drinks can't be taken from the wine bar to the smoking area. Is that confirmed? Apologies, I'm very slow with my fingers. Um, yes, I can confirm all three of those, please. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. And while we were doing that, somebody's been using the message feature. I can't read them and uh, they're, they're just quite distracting and we're not using the message feature of the chat uh, bar for this. So uh, I'd ask you not to. Councillor Mills, you have a supplementary question? Uh, yes, please. To, to go on about the conditions, Ms. Uh, um, Mazuri, uh, the question for uh, Mr. Riske, we had mentioned that the management plan, that is adherence to the management plan, would or could be inserted into the license as a condition as well. And I just wondered, wouldn't like that to sort of disappear. Is that something that uh, could be considered? Because that is the way that all of this will be managed. And in that management plan, does it mention that entrance to the Baccarat uh, bar is only by way uh, through door 5A? So two questions there. Can there be a condition that says that and uh, in the management plan? And can the management plan itself be inserted as a, that it would be adhered to as a condition? Uh, sorry, could you just repeat that? The first question was, um, so, could we duplicate um, the yeah. management plan? I w I'm just looking into the section 182 guidance because it says clearly in that not, not to duplicate if it's already covered in other uh, legislation, as it were, and that would be covered in the management plan. But I, I just need a bit of time to find that and bring that back to you. And what was the second question, please? So in terms of the entrance to, is it called the Baccarat Wine Bar? Is that what the new name of the president? Yes, it is. Yes. So, uh, uh, um, I mean, not to, not not sort of death by condition, but often clarity by condition. Uh, would it be would it be helpful for a condition to be uh, considered that said that entry to the wine bar could only be through door A? And would I also see uh, could could we also seek to say that the smoking area on the top floor on on, on floor six that bespoke um, area will is is also a condition. Um, Councillor, I don't really understand the issue with the entrance exit having a specific um, entrance exit. Obviously, the it's laid out the, the way that it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, it's, it's, it's only. I, I'm thinking really because the residents are obviously concerned that I, I don't know how uh, how and, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry not not to know how Harrods runs its um, its after hours or after the shop closes entries into its various eateries and drinkeries. So what I was seeking in terms of this application was to make sure that that everybody knows that entry and um, exits are through door 5A so that that can be managed and that can be scrutinized. So the question is, in order to do so, one would need to introduce it as a condition. Would that be uh, one reasonable two? Would you be able to offer it? And three, my fellow colleagues may well think it's not um, important at all, but I just wondered what your views were on it. Um, again, I'd have to seek instructions, but I don't really understand the nature of it. 
Um, the bar is clearly, as per the images, very different to what is the brass room. We don't believe there'll be mix. Um, I don't really understand um, the question Mr. per se. Mr. It, Mr. Uh, Riske, I've been in this business too long to know that lots of people mix up things. So uh, the question is, you've got about, I don't know how many doors there are at Harrods, but there are certainly eight to ten doors that you can get in and out of. We have problems, as you know, at the back with the uh, with the macaroon shop. We have problems at the front. We have problems on the side. The residents say that there, that there are problems. The question is, this is now a new proposed wine bar with 75 covers, the possibility of people being in the brasserie and also being in the wine bar. And it's quite simple. It's quite simply to mitigate against too many people going in and out of different doors and whether we could just contain the exit and the entrance to this new premises to be licensed through one door. Um, I wouldn't know if fire regulations would allow that. And certainly that hasn't been taken into consideration. And I, I would need to see constructions. Obviously, it's not something that we've had uh, done before specific to any of the um, specific elements on the premises license. Oh, so, so then can I take away from this, if, 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 if you know it, it hasn't been dealt with and perhaps is relevant to today, can I take away then that there are other entrances and exits from the back row, from the back row door, from the back row bar? Uh, but, you, but you, sorry, bear with me two seconds, please. Um, just to clarify, when the store is open, obviously people could enter and exit through the store. When the store is shut, the only entrance and exit point to the wine bar will be exit 5A. Hopefully that clarifies matters. Yes, that does. That's very helpful. Thank you again. So I won't be, I won't be seeking to pursue that condition. Many thanks. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Councillor Blakeman. Thank you. So, um, door 5A is disability accessible as well, is it? Uh, sorry, the, the disability entrance is door 5 by the express lift. OK, thank you. So, the last statement is not correct. So, it would be 5 and 5A should. Thank you. Sorry, please bear with me two seconds. We'll do. Um, it, just for uh, extra detail, um, because there'll be someone at the door at Baccarat should um, a disabled person want to enter the bar what will happen is a, a member of the Baccarat team will go round and open uh, door five for that person should it take place in that half an hour window between 23.30 and midnight. Hopefully that, that deals with that point. Are you content with that, Councillor Blakeman? Sorry, I was I just seeking so. instructions from the DPS there. So that was a yes, was it, uh, Councillor Blakeman? It was, I think so. I'm getting very confused oh, by the whole business. Right. Do, do you wish to pursue it with another another question? Um, well, Mr. Riesgay said that that was during the um, extension of the licensing hours. So how do disabled people get in otherwise? Uh, they would, if it was store opening, there would be um, entrance 5, not 5A. OK, I think I understand. Thank you. Um, so we're now uh, at the time for questions from the Hanstown Residents Association. Um, you've been very patient. Now, this is not your opportunity to make your case to us. Um, it's your opportunity to ask questions of Mr. Rhys Gay, um, the applicant. So um, uh, Mrs. Esler, Mrs. Borgon Heskier, over to you. Um, I don't know which one of you wants to go first. If indeed you've got questions, this is Borgon Heskey. You've got your video on. Go ahead, but you're still muted. 
you're on mute. Oh, oh, sorry. There we are. There we are. Hello. First of all, I'd like to clarify because I'm rather confused. When you say the uh, brasserie, are we talking about the Tiffany's restaurant or are we talking about the previous La Durée? Uh, no, we're not talking about either. I'll um, hand you over to Ashley who will explain uh, the, the different locations. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, so the Tiffany and uh, La Durée are different spaces. The brasserie, which is in question, is in the uh, centre of the building, which is opposite the wine shop, uh, just adjacent from the wine shop and close to the wine bar, which we've been discussing. And that's on the ground floor? That's on the lower ground floor, same as oh, the wine. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know. Okay. No and also, can you reiterate why smokers have to go to the top floor to smoke and cannot go out five, door 5A and smoke on Hans Crescent, the door they came in? It was a condition as part of our planning, was part of our management plan that we came up with as a um, complaint as part of planning um, around smoking. And it was a plan that was offered to alleviate uh, that complaint at that point. Hence what why we came up with that management plan. I, I, I missed, what was that complaint, why you couldn't do it? What was it was an objection um, to the planning at the time, uh, which is where the appeal uh, process had gone in and we created the management plan to alleviate um, that objection. Can I ask who objected? I wouldn't know from memory if I'm it's honest. It's rather bizarre because um, I don't know who would be objecting. I know residents associations did not object. From memory, it was an association, but I'm not too sure which one, but it was a resident within the area with objected at the time. Okay, I have my reservations. Also, you say that there have been no complaints. Now, what I'd like to say is perhaps the residents are complaining to the wrong uh, person, but there have been lots of complaints directed at Harrods, and we have been directing those complaints to someone called Antonetta Horbury. I don't know what department she's in, but we have made many complaints to her. They're lodged. You can you can speak to her. There have been numerous complaints. So I have to say on that score, uh, I do disagree. So is that a question? Um, no, do you sorry. Want somebody, uh, somebody to uh, answer that? Well, he. I was told that there were no complaints. So uh, where, so let, where is your information? There were no complaints. Let's, sorry, let's we put that to the uh, Mr. Reese game. Um, is Antoinette de Huxbury part of the council or is she yes. part of? Yes, RBK and C, yes. Okay, so, sorry, yeah, because we were confused. We haven't got someone of that name here. Yeah. No, no, no she's, she's, uh, yeah, she, we have complained to her and we have complained to TFL. We have complained to the Department of the Environment. So I don't know where you're getting your information. There have been no complaints. So, Mrs. Borgon Hestia, we're asking questions of Harrods, and they can only ask answer for themselves. Um, the not the for question the, is, the what is this? They said there were no. They, they said there was only one complaint. What was that complaint from? Where? What department? Uh, the one complaint um, I was made aware of was the one at Appendix E uh, that was in relation to building building noise. Um, having spoken with Ashley, he was unaware of any complaints in relation to licensing at the premises. Uh, and as far as Harrods uh, are concerned, we are unaware of any uh, formal complaints other than uh, that mentioned uh, within Exhibit 1 in relation to building noise. Uh, and that okay. was at the back end of last year, I'm afraid. OK, this, these the complaints have not, nothing to do with the wine bar application, so I apologise. No, they're, they're different issues, but... I'll get to my point when it's my turn. Sure, yes. Do you have any other questions? I know uh, Mrs. Esler, I think, is... Uh, I'll, I'll leave it in. to her at the moment, yes. Okay, no, no problem, thank you. Um, Mrs. Esler, I think you've got yes. a, a question uh, or two. Hello, yes. Um, so I wanted to clarify uh, the something that wasn't still made, or he, the, the, that Harris still didn't clarify. The two entrances that will be used from seven, at the moment, seven o'clock, which is store closing time, until midnight where uh, the wine bar, the Bakara wine bar closes, are entrance five and 5A. Entrance five is the main uh, large entrance on Hans Crescent, and 5A is next to it where the entrance for the uh, wine bar is. So those two entrances will be used from seven o'clock to closing time. 
uh, for uh, the wine bar. Um, that's the clarification for everybody. Uh, so so uh, let's we have to put this as a question to Mr. Reese Gay. So perhaps yeah. you come so back. So I and wanted to has he has the, has he changed the plan or is this still the, the case? Because this yeah, is Ash the plan. Ashley will deal with this question if, if that's okay. Yes, certainly, uh, Mr. Saxton. Thank you. So once the store closes, the only door which will be available for customers using the wine bar will be door 5A. The only reason that door 5 would be used would be if a disabled customer had notified us of wanting to go inside that space. We will then have a procedure with security to unlock door 5 to allow them in and lock it again after they leave using the elevator, which is on the opposite side of door 5 to access the lower ground floor. That would be the only scenario where we would use door 5A when the store would not be open. Thank you. And um, as far as I'm aware, because uh, we are we are the, some of the residents that uh, actually did object to the original planning for this wine bar, uh, because of um, the noise which is caused by uh, the cars dropping off and uh, people leaving, coming, and all which is entailed in that. Now, uh, why has Harrods chosen to ignore all of our um, objections to the smoking area, which was which you have decided to place, uh, um, you know, in front of our homes, as opposed to putting the smoking area, you know, outside door five A, where actually at the moment that's the commercial side of uh, Harrods with the paved area, which is, uh, and there are other restaurants who do have seats seating outside for smokers and smoking areas there. So why has Harrods decided to uh, take the objection of maybe one resident from across the road, as opposed to uh, many, many others, because there was about 20 of us who actually came to the hearing uh, to, to object to this smoking area, which is next to our homes, upstairs in the residential area, as opposed to the commercial area. And it's it's actually halfway across the store from from the wine bar. Mr. Reese Gay. Uh, Chair, um, I can only reiterate what Mr. Saxon has said in that um, the management plan was put together due to the licensing process uh, and it was deemed by RBKC to be the best way to deal with smokers for the wine bar. Hence, that is the plan that is in place to deal with smokers for the wine bar. Um, I'm just very, very uh, concern that we're sort of edging on planning elements here now rather than licensing elements. Uh, uh, okay, I will point out the licensing elements. So you keep saying that the smoking area upstairs uh, is you're going to you're going to have it only for the wine bar. However, that smoking area is designated for the for the use of Tiffany uh, restaurant as well, who can also I, I believe take their drinks up there and drink when they go up there to smoke. There's no restriction on that. Uh, Mr. Reesker, I think you had a different answer to that question earlier. Yeah. Hi, sorry, I'll just answer that. On, Mr. Saxton. On Mr. Reesker's part. I think for all of our restaurants, we, we don't allow any of our customers to leave uh, with any consumable goods of any of our spaces, uh, purely because obviously the cost of produce which we are uh, selling within store. So there would be no circumstances where a customer would leave, for example, with a glass of wine from one of our restaurants to make our way to a smoking area, regardless. And uh, the the noise, you don't think that five plus, uh, you know, all those guests, 18 people up there in that area, at any time the noise is going to be too much for us residents as, until midnight and past midnight, or, or no, until midnight? Um, sorry, me me now, uh, just to clarify that that area for this wine bar is bespoke to the wine bar, will be for five people uh, and, and won't be mixed with, um, I believe you said Tiffany's. Uh, That's right. We can clarify that, that management plan and that area is bespoke for those five people in that five area on the six. So you definitely have created two separate areas now. I believe that's the case. I can, with clarification, confirm that that is a bespoke area. But was that in terms of planning, I don't have to hand what has been agreed for. So, uh, I believe you said the Tiffany's bar, but I haven't seen uh, any planning. I haven't seen any planning uh, for the separation of the uh, creation of another area uh, uh, for smoking. Do you have it at hand? Do you it, know? No, unfortunately, no. I, I'm I'm 
her licensing specialist, not their planning specialist. Unfortunately. So maybe, yeah. So I don't maybe think we're going to get any. Mrs. Says, I don't think we're going to get much further with that. All point. that I can do is clarify that that area is bespoke to those five people in this wine bar. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Esler, do you have any other questions? Um, yes. Uh, it's regarding the uh, passenger, the, the not passenger, sorry, clients leaving uh, the wine bar. Now, the you've said uh, that you would be directing them to Brompton Road. Uh, however, uh, Brompton Road, there is nowhere for cars to stop and pick people up except for black cab. There's only a black cab rank. That means that, uh, because now we have many different types of car taxis and firms, that means that uh, cars are going to be coming down Hans Road and round the back of Harrods uh, to collect passengers or drop off passengers. Uh, you, how are you going to control that? Because that's uncontrollable. You can't, you can't control that. And the noise is going to generate until about, uh, until past midnight. Um, all I can do is refer you back to uh, the appeal notice that doesn't think there will be an issue with the wine bar and the limited numbers of personnel in there um, that will create these issues that you're um, concerned about. So in terms of it, the management plan has been approved um, by the planning department uh, and indeed uh, it, it is there before you. Uh, the actual uh, evidence is that they do not believe that there will be issues with, with the wine bar in terms of um, the alleged numbers and noise that you believe there will be. So you think there's not going to be any noise at all of uh, 75 covers every, as you've set out, uh, every hour coming and going uh, at the, to the wine bar? Uh, that, in terms, what, in terms of the wine means? bar, it has a maximum capacity of 75. Um, that's all. We, uh, operationally, I'm unaware currently of, of how it will trade. But in... Um, the understanding of the appeal notice is that it's a very busy area. Anyway, Brompton Road is in the centre of London. Um, the place is a noisy place. There's a lot of background noise uh, anyway. Uh, and indeed, um, the evidence is that it will not, through the, the transport plan, uh, the transport assessment that was put in, there would be no uh, extra noise um, associated with the wine bar, as can be seen in the appeal notice. Uh, actually, uh Yes, the appeal. This is this is incorrect because uh, we live here. Mrs. Ezlis, Mrs. Ezlis you need to, you, rather than contradicting Mr. Reese Gay, you need to phrase yes. what you're doing in terms of a question oh, okay. to him, please. So at this stage, is, the question is because because he's mis they've said that they would put signs directing uh, the uh, clients out of the wine bar and to Brompton Road. But how are you going to ensure that they do follow your instruction and when they're leaving, go to Brompton Road and not go the other way to, to the residential area behind? Um, again, in terms of uh, there will be a security present. Uh, and again, that's alluded to in the management plan. Um, but in terms of licensing, as soon as uh, I suppose a person has left the premises, uh, they are free. We couldn't restrain them or do anything with them. All we can do as a, a responsible operator is put the signage in place, have our stewards in place to ensure that they go, do go down to Brompton, Brompton Street. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. You can't do anything and they will come round the back. OK, I don't have any more questions at the moment. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Mrs. Esler. Um, I'll just turn back to my colleagues finally, um, Councillor Mills and Councillor Blakeman, to see if anything's arisen from the question session. Not for me. Thank you, Councillor Blakeman. Councillor Mills, it has, though. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, two questions arising. Uh, one for the lawyer, Mr. Uh, or for Harrods. Um, you, you, you mentioned the bespoke area. It was a little bit grey what you said, or, or at least to me. Are you prepared to say that uh, you will uh, either revise the management plan or offer the committee the condition that the smoking area on the top is bespoke, as in will be in some way cordoned off for the sole use of the um, users of the uh, wine bar. That's question number one. And question number two, arising from the 
hands down um, queries where they say there have been complaints. I notice condition nine and 10 on your license, which talks about the dedicated telephone number and the email operating for complaints. Have you been circulating those numbers to the local residents association so that they don't have to uh, speak to um, and, 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 and uh, Ms. Horbury, who is at the council? And have you had any complaints to your to your telephone number or to your book of complaints or to your email relating to Harrods and noise from uh, from this area? I think Mr. Riske is taking instructions. Sorry, I'm just quickly taking instructions. Oh, yes, Please bear right. with me. So if I could just answer the second point, um, yes, within the seven days, we always notify uh, Residents Association uh, and the local ward councillors. So that was last done in October 2019 uh, with the change of DPS when Ashley came on board. Um, please bear with me for um, your first question. Um, in relation to your first point, um, we would just say we think um, we're, we're again uh, straying into planning um, elements here. Also, um, we can confirm it is bespoke um, to the wine bar. And if you feel it necessary uh, to impose a condition, um, then uh, it, it is up to the committee to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So that, um, uh, Mr. Riske, thank you very much for your uh, submissions and for answering uh, all the questions. Uh, we're now turning to the um, objectors and we have uh, um, just the Hanstown Residents Association this afternoon, the two of you. Um, so you have uh, 10 minutes uh, now to present your, your case and uh, up to you how you split the time between you. Okay, um, I shall, does that mean I get, we, we can split it into five minutes each, yes? Absolutely, yes, or whatever you want to do. Okay, uh, so the closing time for the wine bar 
at the moment you've asked for a condition 24 hour closing time however that is not going to uh, alleviate the noise where the inevitable noise from customers uh, you know going off to midnight and then also the staff which the inevitable staff which have to leave after that as well uh, there's also after our disturbances from delivering and clearing away supplies and rubbish which is all going to happen way after that now um there is no way that uh harrods harrods doesn't have any jurisdiction obviously out, outside of its doors and they, ca they can't control uh where their patrons leave from they can control what door they leave from but they can't control which direction they go to and uh we are a, a residential area behind harrods uh and uh we throughout the day we all obviously um, have a lot of um, uh, transport people uh, during the Harrods closing hours. Uh, now, at least we know at seven o'clock that stops. After seven, if this wine bar is going to be open and people are going to be coming and going with their fast cars and their, um, you know, their uh, the taxis picking up, doors closing, opening, it's going to be very difficult for us living here to have any peace in the evening uh peace that a lot of people take for granted um in other areas uh now harrods this wasn't the case when we moved here i'm a long time resident here uh i've been here over 20 years and this wasn't the case uh it's since uh harrods has been you know with stealth getting into the um entertainment business well not i mean the restaurant business that this has grown and um, I can give you an example of uh, another restaurant which is open uh, here just next to our, in this area just behind Harris and Harry's Harry's bar now a couple of times I can say two times uh, I've seen fights outside Harry's uh, and um, and once it was a fight between uh, the clients and another fight was between uh, the actual people who work there then we have the um, people who work there coming out late at night, taking breaks, having their cigarettes, chit-chatting. Uh, we have all of that going on every night. Now, if Harrods has wants to do ha, wants to have this license for the wine bar, I mean, to at least they should be able to um, not have it for. We we don't think they should have it for every night of the week. That's the first thing. And we feel that uh, the time should be definitely changed uh, for um, for the weeknights. Um, so and Sunday definitely has to be earlier because there has to be some consideration for the residents. Um, and uh, the dispersal policy that they have, it's it just it's not a policy at all. The sound. Uh, uh, the sound. Um, survey that they've done which was done many years ago is is it's a work of fiction and it doesn't hold true true to what is going on now and at the moment we also still have taxis um uh, a taxi problem double parking all in in this area we can't cross the road people are always worried about crossing the road and um we are definitely against the license that they want to get for the wine bar and uh, we are not. We we are also. We would like them to. We like it to be revised uh, in some form. And just putting up signs outside the door saying we we encouraging the patrons to go another way. It doesn't suffice. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to hand you over to my um, colleague now, Mrs. Borgon Hestia. Thanks very much, uh, Mrs. Hesler. Mrs. Borgon Hestia, go for it. Well, what I'd like to say is that the last application, the planning application uh, meeting, I was present and I spoke and I did question Howard Solicitor why the smokers had to go to the top floor to smoke and why they could not go out to Hans Crescent. The objection came from Harrods. Harrods didn't want them to go into Hans Crescent because he said they felt it was dangerous. It wasn't safe for their clients. They preferred that they stayed in the store. Now, if it's not safe for Howard's clients to smoke on the street, but then when they close, it's safe for them to go to Hans Crescent again to get to Brompton Road, that's a contradiction. 
And they're not going to go to, to Brompton Road. They're going to go and wait for the taxis because the taxis queue up from Walton Street to Walton Place to, ha to Basel Street to get their precious fares every day at Harrods. And when you question Harrods, it's not the jurisdiction. So I'm on the phone all the time with Antonetta Horbury, TFL, Department of the Environment. Nothing has been resolved for over one year. I doubt if the license will help this problem. It will only exasperate it. The, um, the license should be reviewed on an annual basis. The condition was removed. Uh, last time they said they would they would review it on an annual basis, but that condition was remo removed. And I don't think that is wise. I think it should be constantly reviewed. I don't even think it should be granted. But I am. I think the residents have put up with a lot from Harrods. We like Harrods. We want to see them do well, but we don't see Harrods responding to our concerns. We do not have a dedicated number or contact. After hours, who do we reach? We have no information. Nobody has been forthcoming. And all it is, it's about Harrods. The council has always been about Harrods. It's never been about the residents. And I really think that the council should preempt future problems because once this license is granted, we are gonna to be told there's nothing we can do. And that's the problem. They can do nothing about the taxis. They can do nothing about the rubbish coming into our gardens. They can do nothing about the noise that's coming. So the residents are now trying to put their foot down. We've had enough. We don't want seven days a week. We don't want 24 hours of this noise. Midnight is very late. I don't see why anyone has to go to a restaurant in this area as if we're short of restaurants. Why do they have to stay till midnight? I rest my case. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Mrs. Borgen Haskier, and indeed, um, thanks very much, Mrs. Esler. Um, the time has now come. We need to ask some questions uh, of the um, objectors. But Mr. Grisque has put his electronic hand up, so I. I think I will give him the chance to, um, is this a question, a matter of fact, well, or coming back? It's not a question, it was just I thought I'd be able to assist with a number of responses to those points, if that would assist the committee. Uh, I think you think we probably prefer to ask our questions first, and, um, oh, okay. and then we may want to, to come back into you um, presently. So, um, so for questions then, uh, Councillor Blakeman, please. Um, just to question the residents' associations, they say that they were present at the planning <coughs> appeal and that the bespoke smoking place was specifically for Tiffany's as well as the bar. Are they absolutely sure that that is the case? Yes, yes, absolutely sure. Absolutely. I have a picture of it now with the mapping, but I don't know how to share it on this on this um, device. I mean, on this uh, chat, this uh, meeting. I have a plan of it, of exactly where it is. Thank you. That might be why we haven't been given the planning plan for the sixth floor. So there's a technical question here for the um, um, for the committee officers. Are we able to see a plan? Are you, are you able to help Mrs. Um, Esler share whatever she's going? She wants to show. Anne or uh, Leone. I'll bring Mr. Rees in a minute. Let's let's hear from the committee officers. Is, uh, is there a technical way of doing this? Uh, I, I'll bring Mr. Rees Gay in. Hang on, I'll be, bring Mr. Rees Gay in. Sorry, Chair, mine, right Chair, mine is only a very small point. Um, obviously, this is all new. This isn't wasn't no. put down in their representation, and therefore um, we can't respond to this. And therefore, under sort of Regulation 19, I, I do object to this. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it, in that case, it I'm won't. sorry, but uh, the smoking area isn't my objection. I've I've written it clearly. The smoking area designated to the Harris Vine Bar is on the top floor facing Hans Place. This is the currently the smoking area for the new Tiffany Cafe, also. So it, I did actually outline it. All right, I think we, we've heard what you've said verbally, uh, Mrs. Esler, and we have to leave it at leave, leave that point there. Um, Councillor Blakeman, any? further if you'd like to pursue your questions further. Uh, no, that's all I had, thank you. 
Okay, in which case, Councillor Mills. Uh, just one question to the Hanstown residents. Uh, under condition nine and condition 10, it talks about this dedicated telephone number at Harrods for the DPS to make complaints as well as an email. And we've heard from the lawyer for Harrods that uh, that the last time the DPS changed to Mr. Saxon, the residents associations were informed, I think he said October 2019. I was just wondering uh, if you had made any complaints to either that telephone number, the DPS, or the email, or the manager of Harrods, and if so, when? Uh, you mean complaints regarding the wine bar or general noise complaints? Well, I think the wine bar obviously is not in, in, against the planning or what, what kind well, of... Well, I think you're saying that there are noise complaints. There might be people outside. I think Mr. <clears throat> White mentioned that, uh, yes. you know, that there were smokers uh, making a noise upstairs, uh, you know, on the top floor and not outside 5A. So, I mean, there seem to have been a series of concerns. Yes, so well, I, we've, we've complained complain to the council to, usually. To the council. We haven't used, yes, we haven't used the Harrods. Uh, I called once, but it was on, I called Harrods itself or, and they were, I don't know, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have the number that they, they say they've given us. Uh, okay. And I just bought, phoned uh, the council several times. Oh, okay, so so basically, can we conclude from that that you haven't complained to Cat to Harrods just to Harrods? No, no, not to Harrods directly. No, I haven't. And and in the um, and, and what there used to be when we first uh, when, when when Harrods uh, when we first started to license Harrods, as you say, when it started to open its eateries, there was a convention with the with the then management, which I'm sure will have changed, that they would have regular meetings with the residents associations uh, to to try and work out uh, with them, are you sort of on the ground, uh, what was happening. Are you having any of those consultation liaisons or meetings with Harrods? Um, well, we, uh, this uh, Hanstown Resident Association is, is new. We only formed it uh, a few months ago. Uh, okay. Prior to that, we were approaching um, these issues um, as a group of residents, and we just joined, uh, we just formed that recently because, um, yeah, nothing else was being done otherwise when we're okay. individuals. So, uh, so how closely do you, uh, uh, do you work with the Knightsbridge Association who have got uh, quite a long relationship with Harrods on this? Uh, we, we do take a guidance from them. Okay, so could I make a suggestion uh, as as well? I mean, this this has been this has been something that that has been that that is done where we seek to establish again by way of condition that there are regular meetings between the local residents associations and the premises uh, to avoid these kinds of issues. Of course, and uh, one thing to point out is that nice, the Knightsbridge Association is actually a commercial association as well. So it's about everybody at Knightsbridge, and uh, so they. Um, so that's why we formed the Hanstown Residents Association to deal with all of these uh, issues that comes up, and um, you know we have to deal as residents, not as businesses. Well, would that be something that perhaps the chairman? could seek uh, from Harrods, and it's not an undertaking that actually becomes a condition, it's quite standard to have them on on licensing applications where it seeks the, uh, you know, it seeks regular meetings between the the establishment and uh, and the residents associations and they, and, and, and uh, I don't know how you would feel about that. Uh, we would, uh, we would probably welcome that, but uh, in the past when we did have planning meetings, we did uh, speak to um, pin, um, sorry, the, the lawyer, the legal company. When we did have the planning meetings, and we said you should speak to us, you should approach. But they really were not uh, open at all to speaking to any residents or giving, you know, involving the residents in their decision in, in what they're going to do. Well, uh, at the risk of belaboring a point, I mean, we can ask. Uh, the committee has got uh, the power to seek such a condition, and certainly in my my own experience. Uh, it's been very helpful because a lot of these problems before review are sorted out, if you like, at ground floor level. And and it used to happen, but it seems to have um, fallen away. So the question to you really is, is this something you would like the, as you're a new association? A yes. 
uh, would you like the committee to solicit such a condition from from Harrods that they would that, be to do? Yes, that would be that would be a good condition to have. So, but you know, um, it would be I think quarterly good. meetings no, usually, yeah. and uh, I've seen on on applications before. But that's perhaps something for the chairman. I just wanted to see if if how you would how the hands down would feel about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Mills. I think um, rather than uh, my launching into uh, a couple of questions I've got for the Hanstown Residents Association, we'll pursue that point uh, that Councillor Mills has very helpfully raised with um, Mr. Rees Gay now. And how how would you um, um, feel as a uh, Harris would feel about a quarterly meeting with the residents? Chair, am I answering on that specific point, or can I give a, a wider rounding to the issues that were raised? Or would you Why don't your you? Hands? Why don't you give a round a, a, a rounded answer, um, including so that, the answer to that point? I, I certainly will. So, in terms of staff um, exiting, that was mentioned again. That is covered uh, in the management plan, specifically their dispersal. Um, in terms of Harry's Bar, I suppose this is our fear, and it happened at the last um, licensing hearing that there is a those clients of Harry's are certainly not clients of Harrods, and that every application on its merits, and we would we would hate for. Um, us to be tarnished with the same brush um, as Harry's. In terms of the the noise assessment, um, its date on it is is 2019, so I don't believe that is um, old news, for want of a better word. In terms of deliveries, um, yes, there will be uh, a later time, but there are um, there aren't going to be specific deliveries um, for uh, this bar to open at that stage. They will be encompassed in um, the delivery uh, and. Uh, recycling times that are already for the premises, nothing there will change. In terms of the bespoke um, planning hearing points raised uh, in terms of a plan, again, I cannot comment on that. All I can um, push the licensing committee to is that this is for uh, licensing uh, and licensing only, uh, as it were, but I, I can't comment on that point. Um, I can only give you the evidence that is before you. In terms of a quarterly meeting, as you're aware, um, we do uh, and stick to the seven day plan. Um, and having uh, just spoken to Ashley offline, he's more than happy to have coffee um, with the uh, Hanstown Resident Association. We don't feel that it, we need another condition on there. There is the DPS email and phone number to be called. Uh, and indeed, uh, Mr. Saxon is, is, is more than willing to, to meet with the residents face to face to discuss any issues that they do have. Um, unfortunately, it, it is the case and it has um, come up today that he hasn't been approached and therefore um, these issues um, we have no evidence of, unfortunately. But yes, um, Mr. Saxon is, is more than willing to have a coffee. We don't think it needs an extra condition because we have conditions 9 and 10 that give his contact details uh, for him to arrange that meeting anyway. Which I hope, I hope that assists. Uh, it does assist. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rees Gay. So, um, going back to um, my questions for Hanstown, we um, for for both of you, uh, Mrs. Borgen Heskey and Mr. Mrs. Uh, Aslan. Um, there's quite a lot of restaurants in the, in the area which have uh, midnight closing. So, not just Harry's Bar, but also Zia Teresa in Hans Road. Mayo's a bit earlier. There's the Georgian restaurant itself in Harrods. Uh, the Levin Hotel, the Capital Hotel, um, even without bringing in Harry's Bar. Um, why? And the borough has a has a general sort of no later than midnight policy. So why why not this wine bar when you've got all these others around, Mrs. Borgen has here. I think predominantly we have a lot of problems with the taxis. It seems to me taxis are just coming for Harrods. They're not coming for Harrods, they're not coming for the capital, they're coming for Harrods. And we have a very big problem that the council fails to resolve. And this is going on for over a year. So the problem will not stop at seven o'clock or nine o'clock whenever Harrods closes. It will now go until midnight because there's no business going on. People are desperate and taxis are desperate for business. And they are so desperate. If you saw the queues of taxis every day, it's a circus. And that's why we're concerned. It's a residential area. The capital is, is it, they don't seem to be going there. The taxis don't seem to go. They only seem to come to Harrods. Harrods should be very happy with the success. But at the same time, it's making our lives hell. 
Thank you. And um, you said you're quite a new residence association. No. Oh, uh, the, the, sorry, the, I've been living here 40 years. The association is um, it's it's a new association because we represent the residents. Yes. And how many residents have you got as members of the Hanstown Residents Association? How um, many? I, I don't have that at hand. My colleague does because she has the list. Mrs. Uh, Esther? I, yeah, we're, we are still growing at the moment. Uh, we are about 20 and uh, it's just expanding and expanding. Of course. And, and when I think of Hanstown, I might be wrong in this because I'm not quite in your area. I sort of think of the area of Walton Street and Southwards towards... <laughs> Yes, but, but, exactly. It's all the Hans, Hans Place itself, all the roads that go off it and Walton uh, Place and, you know, all this area behind Harris, basically. So south, south of Walton? Southwards, yeah, yeah, south and south. west. So, yeah. but it would include Basil Street, would it, as well, in your, your view? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. OK. Um, thank you very much. I don't have any further uh, questions for you, but um, let me just uh, ask Mrs. Le Maziri if she has any questions. The residents no questions from me thank you chair thank you very much and um mr reese gay do you have any questions for the residents associations chair i don't have any questions i just have a clarification point on that duplication of the management plan condition okay in relation to the premises license please do um, so in terms of section 182 guidance it clearly states that uh, 1.16 should not duplicate other statutory requirements or other duties based uh, on the operator and indeed that's also you're going a bit faint there i don't oh, know if you sorry i'll that's have better. my microphone down um that's covered in um paragraph 1.16 of the section 182 guidance in relation to license conditions saying that they should not be they should not duplicate other statutory requirements or other duties or responsibilities placed on the employer by other legislation uh, and indeed it, it's reflected also in your own statement of licensing policy and that can be found at page 47 uh, of, of exhibit one. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, at 14.64, um, it says it should uh, avoid duplication and inefficiency. So. On that basis, as they're covered in the management plan, we would ask that they're not reduplicated uh, on the premises license. Uh, Councillor Mills, you had a your hand was up. Uh, Mr. Reesgate, not not to try and play Perry Mason in this at this late hour, but my understanding of the duplication is that we should not ask you, that is, ask a premises to prepare a new management plan when there is one already in existence. My my uh, request to you uh, for the convenience of the siloed operations of the Royal Borough of um, Kensington Chelsea is that reference is made to the management plan within the conditions, just so in, insofar as the, the, like the premises will adhere to the management plan that had been submitted to the planning authorities, nothing more nor less than that. And if, in fact, the, you say that within that management plan and there is some dispute, it would appear as to that, that there is a bespoke uh, smoking area on the roof, then then that's fine. But uh, no, I, I think we are, may I say that my, my view is that that is what duplication means, that it would be onerous on Harrods to go and do a second duplicate management plan. But all I'm suggesting for the convenience of enforcement officers and residents, and indeed the licensing committee, is that reference to that management plan is made. I'm not even sure we've seen it. Uh, it's, it's here. So uh, that reference is made uh, by way of amending perhaps a condition that's already there just to show that there is a plan in place because licensing enforcement officers will not be going across to planning to see if there's a management plan if they seek to uh, have to enforce. Mr Eskay, what do you say to that? Uh, Chair, if you could please bear with yes, me. Yes, surely. Uh,
Hello, Chair. Um, I suppose just from our point of view, uh, again, we feel we're, we're drifting into planning again. Uh, and indeed, if you have a condition on a premises license that says refer to the management plan, uh, then, then there could be real issues moving forward. What we would say then um, is as per my interpretation of the guidance and the we shouldn't seek to duplicate. Uh, the guidance also states that uh, as for example, if there were longer planning hours and there were granted licensing hours uh, under planning, um, this can be enforced and that is what we say should be the means of enforcement in this case. Hopefully Chair that assists. Okay, thanks, Mr. Riske. We'll we'll come back to um, conditions in a moment. The licensing officer will, uh, sorry, uh, the legal officer will uh, will cover those in a moment. Uh, Councillor Mills, do you wish to come back on that uh, point at all? Uh, well, I mean, only to say that in the absence of a dispersal policy that has been consulted on with residents, etc., and the lack of inclusion of the management plan, so enforcement officers understand what that is in terms of either smoking. Uh, or anything like that, um, that may, you know, it may lead one to wonder why midnight and why not 11.30. So that's my only comment on that. But if you don't, if it, it's Harrod's wish uh, not to, to see this as duplication rather than ease of enforcement, um, that, that so be it. So that's uh, my only comeback on that. Thank you, Councillor Mills. I mean, I can see the um, how helpful it would be, but Mr. Rieske, uh, um you wish to come back? Your hand is up. Yeah, Chair, just um, please bear with me uh, two seconds. Surely. Chair, thank you ever so much for your patience. Um, obviously, our, our case is that we're reluctant to duplicate. However, um, if it does satisfy the committee, um, if you'd like to add a condition to say that we will operate in accordance with the management plan, then then please add it. Obviously, we don't feel that it's necessary, but but should the committee feel that it's necessary, then then that condition uh, could be added. Um, very grateful, Mr. Rees Gay. Um, I mean, clearly a very helpful management plan in itself, but uh, we'll obviously consider that later on and grateful for your uh, uh, your offer there. Um, so I think um, we've heard the uh, the case for the objectors and now I turn to uh, the legal officer for uh, any advice and to um, go through any conditions that you wish to. This Thank is you, Chair. I think it was just really a case of just clarifying the conditions, which I think I touched on earlier. Um, I think Mr. Rees Gay is happy with the closing time being 2,400 hours. I think he was happy with the extra condition which they offered. He was happy with patrons not taking their drinks from the wine bar to the smoking area upstairs. 
he was happy for there to be a condition for the for there to be a bespoke smoking area on the sixth floor roof terrace or terrace area. He wasn't happy to have a condition for meeting with residents associations quarterly. And then I think he's just said he's happy to cross reference to um, have a condition to say that they're happy to act in accordance with. Is it the wine bar management plan that you're referring to when you say the management plan? Yes, it's the wine bar management plan and the extra papers at page 49. Yeah, that, that's it as far as I'm concerned. I haven't got any other points to raise. Sure, can Thanks. you just bear with me two seconds? Sure, I was just going to ask if anybody has any comeback, but I think Mr. Rees Gay does. So, uh... I see your hand up, Mrs. Zesler. We we need to wait for Mr. Rees Gay to come to come back. Uh, yes, in terms of um, what the licensing officer said. So sorry for just on the first condition, the um, midnight condition. That's obviously bespoke to the wine bar. Just to clarify that point. Um, in terms of the no resident meeting um, on that point, it was just that we have already conditions nine and ten. It wasn't that we absolutely objected to it. It was just that we had those on there and thought again that that would be duplication. But again, the, the remainder of what was said was correct. Thank you. Um, thanks. Did anybody else wish to come back um, on what they've heard from the legal officer? Um, so, Mrs. Esley, your hand went up a moment ago. Um, yes, sorry, I didn't understand. Is, is it that you don't have the, ma the management plan isn't in these documents or is it that is, is that the case? The, the management plan uh, is, is at pay is in exhibit two from page 49 onwards, 49, oh. 50, uh, 51 and 52. OK, thank you very much. Does anybody else have any um, comebacks and comments for Mr. Missouri on the legal uh, side? Uh, only that, I mean, I take entirely the point and it's well reasoned and accepted that condition nine and ten should cover uh, liaison and communication with residents associations and interested parties. But I think it would be helpful in the decision if this were something that officers and the committee were, were interested to do, to mention that willingness to meet with, that Mr. Saxon has expressed, to meet with the residents associations, particularly as this is a relatively new one over coffee to discuss sort of mutual areas of, 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 um, of, of helpfulness and support. So uh, just to ask if, if that would be something that would be welcome in the spirit of openness, transparency, as in it goes in, it goes in the decision, even if it doesn't go as a condition. Is that directed to me? Well, I, I think it's directed it's, to all concerned parties. Yes, I, I think um, it's a point well made, um, Councillor Mills, and I think we, given that Mr. Rees Gay did make that point very clear, uh, and so did Mr. Saxton earlier, I, I think we can reflect that in our <laughs> I, determination. I think just to reiterate, I'm more than happy to meet on a quarterly basis with all of the residents and uh, maintain that relationship going forward. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saxton. Um, so I just asked the licensing officer, Mr. Phelan, do you have any final comments to make? No, thank you, Joe. I have no further comments to make. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, that closes the case for today. Um, thank you very much indeed to all parties um, uh, for your representations. Uh, the panel will retire now to uh, to consider our decision and we'll, we'll meet in the retiring room. We'll have a, a break and we'll meet at five to five, um, so 16.55. Um, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we won't reconvene to announce our decision today. So governance uh, will notify all the parties of the decision within five clear working days of today. Um, but the full minutes will follow uh, uh, much later. So the hearing will is now closed and the live stream broadcast will end. Um, thank you all again for your attendance this afternoon. <laughs>